Today, just like yesterday, we're going to be talking about some triangle congruence proofs. So, the basic way we're going to set these things up is we're going to start with a t-chart. got this, like that. And on the left side, we're going to have make some statements, some mathematical statements, like this is congruent to this sort of thing. And on the right side, we're going to give reasons for why we're able to make that statement. So, to start off, you're going to start with just your given information. So, like, whatever the problem gives you, Usually it's some sides or angles that are congruent or maybe something bisects something else, things like that. Just the basic things to get started. And remember, always label your diagram. Now in the middle, this can be, this is kind of where things get a little freeform here. Um, it's just some other information. Usually it's going to be about congruent sides and angles. Like this side's congruent to this side, that angle's congruent to that angle. You can either see it from the diagram in certain situations with like angle relationships, you can figure it out from um, the given info. So like if they tell you that something is bisected, that'll tell you that two things have to be congruent to each other. And this whole idea should be leading to the conclusion, which for right now, our conclusion is going to be that this triangle is congruent to this other triangle. And that's what you're going to end with. You always have to have a concluding statement. Like triangle ABC is congruent to triangle DEF, because the reason column would be like angle side angle, for example. All right, so this is kind of the way you'll see these things set up. We'll have some given information. So in this case, we just know that AD is the perpendicular bisector of BC. Easy, not so bad. And we have to prove that triangle ACD is congruent to triangle ABD. So this triangle on the left is congruent to this triangle on the right. So. Here's how we do it. Let's look at the given information here. So we know that it's a perpendicular bisector. Those are two very important words that I'm going to highlight. Perpendicular is going to give us something, and bisector is going to give us something else. Now specifically, perpendicular, you should think to yourself, well, that means that it makes right angles. So these angles right here have to be right angles. Those angles being angle ADC and angle ADB. So we know these angles have to be congruent because if this is perpendicular, then these two are 90 degrees, and 90 degree angles are always congruent. So let's write that. And I just said that perpendicular lines form congruent right angles. Notice how I wrote it in red to help color code so you can remember that this came from the perpendicular part here. Now, the bisector part. It's a bisector of BC, which means it cuts BC in half, which should then tell you why that CD has to be the same as BD, which is what we have right here. BD is congruent to CD. And the reason is just that AD bisects BC. Cool, easy, simple. Now, this last statement I wrote in here seems a little too obvious to even bother writing down, but it is going to be important. Because what we're looking at, we need this triangle to be the same as this triangle. But guess what? They share a side. This side obviously has to be the same as itself. So we would write that AD is congruent to AD, and usually you label it with an X like that. That shows that, you know, we know that that side is congruent to itself. And the reason for that is called the reflexive property. And the reflexive property just says that a side is congruent to itself or an angle is congruent to itself. So finally, we're ready to um, finish this proof. We know that this triangle is congruent to this triangle. And the reason for this is either side, 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 angle, side, angle, side, angle, or angle, angle, side. And if we look at it here, we have a side, and then an angle in between, and then another side. So the reason these two triangles are congruent is side, angle, side. So in this proof, it's pretty similar to the other one. We have a really similar diagram, um, the triangle with the line going down the middle. And it says that we have AC congruent to BC, so those two sides are congruent, and D is the midpoint of AB. So let's start by writing the given information. So we have AC congruent to BC, which is labeled, and D is the midpoint of AB. Now, if D is the midpoint of AB, well, that obviously means that AD is the same as DB, because D cuts it in half. So let's write that. 
So I said that AD is congruent to BD because D is the midpoint of AB, which is enough to tell you that everything's fine. Now, if we look at this again, we don't really know anything about these three angles. Yeah, nobody knows if they're all congruent or not. But we have the same thing as before. And let's face it, it's written right here. The reflexive property says that a side or angle is always congruent to itself. And this triangle here and this triangle here both share the side CD, which means CD is congruent to itself. And we can write CD is congruent to CD by the reflexive property. And then finally, it didn't really tell us what to prove here, but um, just an assumption that we're going to prove that triangle ADC is congruent to triangle BDC. So let's write that. And the reason for it, if you look at it, is side, side, side. So that's why these two triangles are congruent to one another.